Hey, what's going on everybody? I get a lot of questions here on YouTube about the different ways that someone can learn development. And I have done a lot of videos similar in nature to what I'm going to be talking about in this video, but you know, it never hurts to repeat myself, I guess. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to look at some of the end goals of developers, and then I'm going to share what I think the best, the, well, what I think is the best. Oh, why am I saying Beth? Who's Beth? And I'm going to share what I think is the best place to start to get to that destination. Now, I'm working on a new setup and I need to get some extra lights in here, so I apologize about this blinding light here and then it's kind of like this giant shadow over here, but I'm working on it. Give me some time, okay? I also feel like this would be a good opportunity to share with you guys some of the recent projects I've finished on my channel that you guys can watch, as well as some of the upcoming projects that you can look forward to watching when they come out. So maybe these resources will help you get to your end destination. Now you always gotta remember, it's not about the destination, it is about the journey. So you always have to try to figure out how to learn in a way that's going to encourage you to keep learning and in a way that's going to bring fun and excitement into your life and not the opposite. So if every day you code, you realize you hate your life, then you're doing something wrong. So I would highly recommend to go down the path that interests you the most and is going to give you the most excitement. Even if that's not necessarily the most popular path or what everyone else is doing, that's not necessarily a bad thing because that can make you more niche than all these other people. Ultimately, I think it's about becoming pretty good at everything and then specializing in one or two things that you become really good at so you can become very valuable in your field. Just try to be like a successful farmer, outstanding in your field. So I think the first path that I'm going to share with you, and this is really where I started on YouTube and in my development career, is the database path. So you can be this data guru and basically learn a lot of different databases and maybe specialize in one or two of them, like I just said. And when you do this, you're going to be ideal as maybe a database administrator, but you can also be a developer heavy on the back end and the data side of things. So maybe you're going to be developing an API to work with the database or whatever it might be. And I find like that's where maybe my ideal sweet spot is because I don't just wanna be a database administrator. A database administrator is a lot different than a developer. When I work with databases, I don't like to focus on the configuration and setting up permissions and all of this stuff. I much prefer to work with SQL or SQL and also working with the database through code. So it ultimately depends on what you want to do, but a database administrator job and a software developer focusing in databases, these are two completely different things. This is an opportunity for me to share one of the series I just finished, and this is Oracle Apex, which is a low-code tool. It allows you to basically build a user interface on top of an Oracle database. So I bet you a lot of you guys watching are here because you subscribe through my Oracle database series, and maybe that's your specialty, but you also want to do some user interface work through a web application. And that's where Apex fits in. It allows you to build web applications using that database. It's also an ideal tool if you're building something from scratch and you're not too concerned about connecting with an existing database. In this situation, you can use the free tier of the Oracle database in the cloud, and this will allow you to build web applications that are rather data driven, which I believe is the specialty for Apex. Now, I wish I knew about this tool a while ago when I started with databases, but I can't go change the past. But if you guys are new to databases, I would encourage you to check out that tool. It's pretty fun and it's pretty useful. I actually built a relationship manager application, very simple, but basically a way for me to keep track of the people I reach out to for collaborations. And I did this inside of my Apex tutorial series. So I'd encourage you guys to check that out. I think Apex is a great way to build business tools. Now, if your specialty is building business applications, that can be one tool in your toolbox, but you're probably going to want to know more. So what do I mean by business applications? Well, I'm talking about stuff to manage data, basically CRUD, create, read, update, delete. In other words, a way to work with a database through an application. You might make an application to display data in a nice way or to automate some business processes and so forth. If that's the case, what is non-business applications? This is what I would consider social networks, gaming, video editing software, anything like that. Those I don't really consider business applications. 
Obviously people are gonna use those for business, but it's kind of a different category. So we'll talk about those in a second, but if you're really focusing on business applications, you would also probably want to consider a language like Java or C Sharp, which is a pretty general language, meaning you can do a lot of different things with it. So you can build mobile applications, web applications, desktop applications, and so forth. The next category could be full stack web development. So if you really want to focus on the web, then some of the tools you're going to want to pick up are JavaScript most definitely, definitely, definitely learn JavaScript, and then HTML and CSS, as well as some basic understanding of HTTP methods and web security and so forth. But I would highly recommend you start with JavaScript. When I started learning website stuff, I was focusing on HTML and CSS, and I put off JavaScript because I was scared. And really, I shouldn't have been scared, I should have just jumped in and enjoyed learning it, because that would have set me apart in my skills a lot from early on. Once you got JavaScript down pretty well, there's some JavaScript web frameworks you can pick up. So there's the obvious ones, which are Angular, React, Vue, and so forth. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there on JavaScript that you can learn. There are also tools to create mobile native applications. So for example, React Native will allow you to create an iPhone app or an Android app that's native to the phone and it's all programmed in JavaScript. Now, I am a little bit concerned that this is a very saturated market. Yes, the demand is extremely high, so I think you can definitely get a job in this, but I would highly recommend to try to figure out something to specialize in to set yourself apart from the competition. Because like I said in other videos, everybody and their grandmother is a full stack web developer. So you need to figure out something that's going to make yourself different. For me, this is my experience in databases. A lot of web developers kind of neglect this part, which is crazy to me because of all these security issues and data leaks and all of this stuff that can make you fired or shut down a company. You don't want to have to have that on your shoulder as a web developer. So I would recommend definitely focusing on maybe databases or security to kind of have a niche that you can become the best at. Now, if you want to do web development, but you're not really into all of the coding required to do it like that, there's another route you could go, which would be a content management system. So there's gonna be a lot of developers who are gonna be like, yeah, that's not real development. But I think that is nonsense because if you're a developer, you should be focusing on solving business problems. So if I can set up a WordPress website and solve 10 business problems, I can make a ton of money and make their lives a lot easier. You can set up an Upwork profile and make a lot of money doing WordPress development. And you can go pretty deep with this, so if you're a pretty heavy developer, you can do plugin development, you can also do theme development, and there's a lot of different stuff you can do with WordPress. A lot of big companies are powered by WordPress, so it is a huge market, and that's another recommended path for you guys. Now the last group I would have for you guys would be game development or photo editing or video editing, all of these really demanding applications. And for this, I would recommend C++. And if you're in game development, try looking into different engines. So there's the Unreal Engine. This will allow you to build a game without having to develop everything from scratch. So it's the engine for the game and then you kind of add the pieces to make it your own game. The reason I recommend C++ is because it's going to give you more control over the computer and it's still more useful than a language like C. There's not a huge reason to use C today because you could do pretty much everything in C++, if not everything. So C++ is almost like an upgraded C with a lot more extra stuff. Anyways, any of your heavy duty applications are probably going to be written in C++. C++ is, in my opinion, a lot harder than some of the other programming languages. It was one of the more challenging languages for me to learn, but I do have videos on it on my channel if you guys want to learn it. And yeah, those are my general categories. And if you listen to all of those and you really still have no idea what you want to start with, then here's what I recommend. This month, I am doing a daily Java programming video. And Java is a really good introduction language because it has a ton of uses, it's well established, and I think it will be here for a while longer. And even if you don't want to die a Java developer, that's fine because once you learn Java, it's so much easier to move on and pick up different languages. So check out every single day this month at 8 a.m. I'm gonna have a new Java hands-on development guide and you can follow those and that'll get you jump started in development and then you can branch off into whatever interests you next. So hopefully this was all helpful for you guys. If you have any changes or suggestions or maybe different categories, then leave them in the comments section below because there's absolutely no way I could cover everything. I just scratched the bare surface. So thank you and be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.